Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. All right, we're at the Canola Discovery Forum 2016 edition here in Winnipeg, joined by Murray Hartman of Alberta Agriculture. And uh, Murray, when it comes to target plant stands for canola, the recommendation on the books right now is 7 to 10 plants per square foot. Farmers have probably been, uh, in general, skimping on, on that. Yeah. You've done some research now in further research in this area, what are you, what are you finding in terms of, uh, of recommendations for Yeah, for so, six? you know, looking at, you know, many years of research and pooling the data together and only looking at herbicide tolerant hybrids only, um, that data suggests that that yield response curve has shifted left a little bit. In other words, we're, we're getting, you know, a lower plant density where the yield starts to drop off. It's a little bit. It used to be, say, four or five, and now it's kind of three or four that it's shifted. You know, so that's a small part, but the other part that's, you know, changed so much in the industry is the relative price of the hybrid seed versus the canola that's produced. Like years ago, I, I went through some of that history where canola price was six times what the price of seed was. And as we moved into hybrid, it became equal. And, and now hybrid seed is worth more than the, a bushel of canola. And that economics of of trying to get a, a, a more yield by putting more seed in the ground changes when the seed is more expensive than a bushel of canola. And so that's a, a big part of the recommendations is the economic reality of that. And you know, looking at that, those two factors together, you could say, yeah, I don't think seven to 10 is an economic range for, for producers to target. It should be lower than that. Seven is, is even too high. Yeah, I would say seven's at the outside of it, yeah. Now there are special, more you know, certain instances where you want a higher seeding rate that might be, you might be able to justify that cost. One is it might be a lot of weed pressure in the field and you don't want to spray twice. So that second spray you might save. You know, you have to work out the economics. Is the extra seed worth, you know, not one spray? But then there's weed resistance point of view. The more times you spray, you're encouraging weed resistance. So, but how do you put a value on that? You know, so I kind of say, give the growers that information of what's the response, and then they can plug in the values of what they think those other, you know, considerations are worth. Where is it a little bit earlier maturity, or you know, more stubble to hold the swath? What, what, just what is that worth to a grower? I can't put a figure on it, and individual grower has to. So. There would also, of course, be factors like seed size and planting yes. date and equipment. Yeah. There's about eight, well, there's seven main factors when I'm thinking about what would be an economic seed rate. First of all, you got your yield response. Well, that one, we know it, we can't predict it. You know, that some years a really low seeding rate works, but we can't predict those kind of environments are going to happen. So you have to take the average. Then you, it's the price of canola, the price of the seed, what your return on investment is you're looking for the thousand kernel weight and emergence percentage is another big one that affects how much you can economically seed, uh, which is something growers have a little bit of a handle on and, and control over, but it's one of those factors, you know? So there's a number there that, you know, they have to go through and choose from, and that's why I suggest that there could be some kind of a calculator app where they could put in their values and, and answer some of those questions and come up with a better recommendation that suits their yeah. preference. Some formula that would take all those factors into yeah. account. Yeah. Seed place fertilizer, I guess, yeah. could be another risk. Yeah, so, you know, um, that's a good example where, you know, instead of increasing your seeding rate to get more plants, you could reduce the amount of fertilizer going in the seed row and improve your emergence and, you know, you, your, your money ahead, you know. So there's, there's a lot of factors to consider and not all of them are easy to quantify. So where does this go from here? You've done this research. Yeah. Where do you hope the industry yeah, takes so it? Now come, come probably go up with a discussion point with some of the life science companies that are selling the seed, you know, whether they have objections or, I know I've seen data from them, you know, that kind of indicates the same thing, you know, and, and then we're, you know, come up with some kind of a general consensus on the recommendation and then change, for example, the uh, information on the Canola Council website, that kind of thing. And, uh, but it's, 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 a significant change down, but you know, it's it's something that's already occurring yeah. in the country, the lower seeding rate, 
And in some cases, they're too low. Like the data I showed, you can see that, boy, you know, you're sacrificing yield and economics by going down to two plants per square foot in most cases, right? So it's what is the optimum to kind of go down to, and that's going to vary between the producers on some of these other factors. But you looked at that strict relationship, as, as good as I can predict it, that's, that's what the returns are. Here on the eastern side of the prairies, we're seeing producers who have planters for row crops, yep, yep. seeding canola now with, uh, with planters. Yep. Is, is that, I guess that, that's part of the equation where yep. we factor in emergence and, and yep. placement? Yeah, yep. so I mean, and there's been some li limited work with precision seeders with canola, and my first impression of the, the data is that it's not as critical for canola as a larger seeded crop like corn or soybeans, you know, or plant population, and the uniformity isn't quite so critical. And then the other part about canola is that it can compensate. You know, if you get the late season weather very well, a thin stand can compensate with a lot of branches and actually you still yield very well, right? So those two things, you know, kind of indicate that we're not going to get the same benefits from precision seeding that we do from some of the other large seed crops. So, but that is one aspect what probably needs more work, you know, and the other interest is in a little bit wider rows, if you're sp spacing them more evenly, can you go to a little bit wider row than what we typically, you know, 12 to 16 inch, we say it, that's the maximum, and, you know, so there's a bit of work with that, but I wouldn't expect the plant population density yield curve to change dramatically even with a precision seeder, you know. Okay, overall, this might all make sense economically and farmers are already doing it, but are we playing with fire? Are we increasing our, our risk if we are getting closer to that cliff on, yes. on that curve? Yeah, so that's one aspect. You say, well, okay, if you, if you looked at the variability of the, you know, of the data, if you're in that six to 10 plants per square foot, yeah, there's a scatter there. Then as you get down to four, the scatter increases, then down four to two, now the scatter is like that. Right, so the average is there, but all of a sudden the scatter is that. Now, if you Not can't, much room for failure if there. If you can't handle that disaster, of a, you know, then that's, you don't want to be in that low end of it. You know, other guys will look at that and say, you know, um, I, I see the upper part too, where I get a really good yield. So it, it just depends on their risk aversion and their comfort, et cetera, you know. Um, but there are certain conditions you say, well, this is a bad idea. You know, if you get really um, patchy stands, you know, patches here and there, we know from research that low plant densities don't do well in there. Um, and if you have weed resistance issues and you're battling weed competition, that kind of thing, then the low stands aren't great. If you're really short um, maturity area, we do know that if you get down to the really low stands, you're going to add several days of maturity. You know, now to go down to say four to six versus seven to 10, you're only talk talking one or two days. But if you're one or two plants versus seven to 10, you're talking in a short season zone, probably a week difference maturity, right? which could add to a green seed problem, et cetera. So, yeah, so each one of those things is particular a certain area and sometimes a certain grower, right? And they're the ones that are best able to put a dollar figure on, on that risk of going down. But there is risks with, with going to the low end. The, but what I pointed out is that the risk of being always on the high end is that, you know, like it's, it's costing quite a bit of money. You know, if we're talking $2, two dollars, two, two pounds an extra an acre just to try to achieve the six to 10. Um, you know what, current, you know, we're talking that's 25 bucks an acre, every acre, right? So there's that risk of, of you know, un, un, you know, not making a good return on your, on your seed. Yeah, well it's interesting to see how the research yeah. evolves, Murray, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.